Today marks the start of tax season, meaning people are obligated to file for their income taxes at the Bureau of Internal Revenue offices. In the third quarter of 2011, a grand total of 231 million pesos was collected from taxpayers. However, some people get confused with the whole process of filing for their taxes, while some don't know the exact computation and deduction of taxes from their income. How does one file for their income tax and what are its requirements? How is the computation of taxes done? Who should file for your income tax returns? Good evening, you are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will be discussing your legal rights on the issue of taxes. What you need to know about how to file your income taxes correctly and on time, and what you need to do to avoid filing them late. We'll be discussing with two guests who are legal experts on the subject. Our guests tonight are Mr. Nelson Aspe, Deputy Commissioner of the Operations Group under the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and Attorney Yuni Mata Perez, who is the President of the Tax Management Association of the Philippines. Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. Karen. Good evening. Hi, Rod. Attorney. Good, Good evening, evening classmates. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have Yuni and I. We were classmates, so, uh, so uh, it was great to see each other. And this is a favorite topic of mine, yes. personally. Actually, yeah. today, just, yeah. just this evening, I was reminded of a very famous quote by yeah. someone from Twitter. Now, yeah. that only In life, only two things are certain, death and taxes. Yes, exactly. So we have someone so, from the BIR so have, who makes sure that we, have, we taxes. have two people here who are certain yeah. about what they're doing. So yes. maybe we should start off. Uh, we'll we'll f set first the parameters, na, um, attorneys, because uh, I think the, the 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 topic of taxes is really uh, yes. really wide uh, really but since uh, april 15 yeah, is april about 15, filing yeah, yeah. our income tax return let's concentrate on yeah. what should be on those income tax returns so yes. maybe we can ask our commissioner yeah, that, from that the BIR, yeah. what are really mga considered income because some people they don't really have to worry if they're working for a company because of the withholding taxes pero may iba it gets confusing pag uh, you have income coming from, for instance, may namana kang bahay na pinaparent mo. Mm. Or you share, yes. you sell shares of stock or property. Yes. Are, are those included in the filing of your income tax? Maybe you can clarify, uh, Depcom, and we'll go with uh, Tony Mata in a while. Well, ordinarily, um, the items of income which, uh, which are supposed to be declare, declared this uh, income tax filing, well, consists of uh, uh, earnings uh, on an employer employer relationship, which so we call them as compensation. No? Mm. Uh -oh. Pag nagtatrabaho ka first time. Uh, right? Then uh, net income from uh, the pursuit of one's profession mm. or in, in engaging in business. So, so includes lawyers, no? doctors, <laughs> lawyers, yeah. Yeah. Yes. lawyers. So any person, class. sorry, sorry, store. Yes. 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 So, yes. Mga, I wonder yeah, if they mga. file taxes, no? Yung mga nasa court. Yeah. Na, These are mga oh, oh. informal businesses, yes. no? And so, then, so rule of thumb, basta kumikita ka ng pera, you have to declare Basically, it. but there are of course uh, items of income which are no longer supposed to be declared this April 15. Meaning mm -hmm. to say, they're no longer subject to uh, the ordinary income tax. Mm -hmm. Like and such what, as? Such what's an uh, example? Well, uh, say earnings in... Uh, Back deposits. Mm -hmm. So interest so income from back deposits. Gonna, so they gonna, have gonna, been gonna, taxed gonna, already. Because yeah, they've been held by the bank. Uh, yeah, interest yeah, income. if you check your <laughs> uh, deposit books, di ba? Yeah. Naka, may na bawas yun. Pag may nakita ka interest, yeah. may bawas din. Yeah. But see, uh, with attorney Yuni, no? uh, of course, not Oh, uh, there are also exemptions. Not not everything that comes in is is tax, right? So you, you you're you're granted certain exemptions and deductions. Can you can you clarify that for for some of our televiewers? Because for a lot of our televiewers, it's finding an income tax return is like uh, it's really a pain in the neck. It's it's really uh, complicated. Maybe you can just uh, just give a, a sam samples of exemptions and deductions that they can remove from from their taxable income. Well, the very basic ones, if you're earning compensation, of course, or an individual, is we have. Uh, uh, so-called uh, um, personal exemptions, right. okay, which is 50,000 per individual for additional exemption for dependents, 25,000. That's supposedly immediately removed from, but this will have to be indicated in the return. Okay, mm -hmm. you mean, uh, Attorney Uni, they have to put, kung income mo, 
you have to put 50,000 for every person, you can deduct 50,000. Yes, okay. for individuals, for individuals. So, and of course, for a business, generally you have business, the so-called business deductions. Those are necessary and ordinary expenses used for the conduct or the management or the development of the business, such as rent, depreciation, all of this stuff, mm. uh, including salaries, of course, if you're especially if you're a service firm, all of these are deductible. Mm. We are also, so these are what we so-called allowable deductions. But going back to your question, Rod, there are so-called um, excluded income or exempt income, like mm -hmm. we have the basic 30,000, Mm. Uh, like 13 Bonds. month pay, 30 bonus month pay, okay. not exceeding 30,000 pesos. Mm. We have so called de minimis benefits like clothing allowance not exceeding 5,000 mm. pesos a year, mm. medical allowance not exceeding 10,000 a year. Yeah. Um, pension, uh, pension income? Of course, retirement benefits. Yeah. We have uh, pension income. Yeah. Mm. Uh, retirement benefits subject to certain qualifications mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. by qualified, uh, under qualified retirement plan and under the law. Mm. So there are a number of exclusions. But for instance, for a generally for a compensation income earner, the deductions are very limited. Mm. Mm. Okay. Right. And I'd like to ask um, our Commissioner Aspep, if you're earning income from an employer, and then for instance, I'm earning income from as well renting just uh, a, rent a room, a for instance, in our house, mm -hmm. how do I file my income tax returns? Well, I, to file two? You would be classified as a mixed income taxpayer and in that case you shall be making use of uh, form 1701 Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, which I is think it's a combination. Yeah. We have some uh, forms Attorney here. Attorney Uni has a form there you example yeah, yeah. here. So the it's an the orange the color. We call that form? the red return. Red, the red return. return. Okay. We call it the red I'm color. Hello, <laughs> orange. So it's red. Okay. okay. So okay. Red, that's that's, a, uh, that's yeah, a mean you're, you're in the red. So okay. Yeah, this is the form that you're at. To declare both your income from mm -hmm. compensation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. from business. And then, PR Commissioner, do you have to then attach yung income tax return from your employer? Because or that's uh, something oh yeah, that they fill out, right? So your, your compensation income has got to be supported by Form uh, 2316. Two, that's okay. the yeah, Certificate yeah. of uh, Income Tax. 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 And then it so depends. you can ask yeah. from your employer from a your copy employer. of that and then you have mm. to include That's the obligation of the employer, employer to yeah. this employer. Now in the case of professionals like us, let's say we're hosting, it's a fi it's it's a different kind of form, two three oh seven, right? Yeah, it's right? So we have to ask our the ones who's giving us uh, compensation or salary, you know, that form, so yes. we can attach it here. Yes. That's right. Okay. Now we have some questions from our viewers. Let's answer a, a few of them with the help of our guests, of course. Our, our first question uh, comes from Nick and he asks, I'm a freelance online writer for several websites and blogs. Now my problem is, I don't know how to file for my income tax since the pay I receive from, uh, from these websites varies. Now is there a table or a list of percentages I can look at to see how much I should file based on the income I receive? So, well, uh, if he's uh, talking of uh, income tax alone, because mm -hmm. there are other obligations eh, in mm -hmm. that right. line of uh, mm -hmm. uh, business or activity. Mm -hmm. Income tax alone, we see it in, in the tax code itself. Mm -hmm. It's at yeah. the back of uh, mm -hmm. the income tax form. So he's I, kind I of mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the how to compute the income yeah, tax. Yeah, he's kind of self-employed. No? So he's, he's uh, at, at yes. only unique. So he, he would be considered self-employed. Yes. He's receiving income from several websites because he designs websites. He's so supposed to aggregate all those income. Aggregate, yeah. I mean, uh, you have to add, not, not to file separate returns for each. Okay. okay. Aggregate the income and then get the amount and see there's a, a table for individuals. The rates mm -hmm. range from 5 to 32%. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, compute the tax based less, of course, whatever deductions allowed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then after getting the tax due, then whatever tax was withheld by the payer of his income, Mm -hmm. The two three supported by the two three oh seven should be yeah. deducted from his tax due. Mm -mm. Okay. I think this is an interesting question because yeah. uh, yeah. a lot of people think, oh, I'm just a student and mm -hmm. I just write blogs as a pastime. But mm -hmm. if you earn income, you really already have to file tax returns. No? Mm -hmm. I should I should add to that uh, the obligation to file a quarterly income. Quarterly, tax return. because so if you're earning, you're earning. Yeah, from in blog. so far as freelance. Uh, um, practitioners okay. are concerned. Quarterly, yeah. there so is no employer employee. You should be filing, yeah. you should have filed should, quarterly, not should just be the BAR for, and four times a year. Incidentally, this coming April 15 is also the last day for the filing of the quarterly income tax for the first quarter of 
2013. Okay, take right. note of that, Nick. Our second question comes from Barbara, and she asks, One of my office mates collects receipts of gas services, tolls, groceries, and gives them to our office accountant. What does doing this have anything to do with our salaries or taxes? Should everyone do it too? Uh, this, is, so this uh, is the practice of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, giving, giving receipts. Yeah, I noticed this but with some of she, my friends because they yeah. say, do you need the receipt? Tapos yeah. unahan sila, and then I guess... Maybe you can clarify. I we should, yeah. um, we should clarify. Well, well, I, I assume the, the, the she's a, a compensation earner mm -hmm. because, as I said, you cannot. Uh, did, I think I mentioned it. Uh, business deductions are not allowed to compensation earners. Mm. Well, sometimes there is such thing as liquidation or reimbursements. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if yeah. uh, you're an employee or officer and yeah. you take out a client and you spend on restaurants, and of course you can give the receipt to that's the part, company. That's part of it business operations. It has to fall so. under the business ordinary and necessary yeah. expenses of the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. so if so, you're an employee. It's unusual. Purely compensation, have. and it's not related to any of your business. Then you're not supposed to deduct that from your compensation mm. income. So generally, tax purposes. generally, if you go to Seven Eleven and buy some uh, tissue, which you will <laughs> not, yeah, and you can't, you can't submit that. <laughs> oh, generally, yes. right? But for okay. for instance, for bloggers, yeah. seguro what they use for using the internet that's expenses. By the way, commissioner. Yes, naman. So long as yeah, yeah. Uh, these it's items really are connected with. The trade okay. or the business of the one claiming the deduction. All right. So and uh, our yeah. next question is from Belle, and she asks, "I would like to start a small business. What kinds of forms should I file in the BIR, and do I still need a new TIN number? I already have one when I used to work. Is there a difference between a personal TIN and mm -hmm. those used for businesses?" Yeah, interesting question. So, oh, well, every person, every person has his own TIN, and that should be permanent. Mm. And uh, getting another one is an, is a violation of the mm. national. So, for instance, if you code. get um, straight out of high school, nagtrabaho ka, then you get a tin, and then you went to college, so you stop working. When you start working again, like ten years after, it has yes. to be the same. same the same, same TIN. Yeah. No, of course, uh, the exception uh, is to when you put unless you incorporate a right. Oh, yes. okay. Okay. Meaning that's uh, because a corporation yeah. is always a separate, separate taxpayer. Person. But if you're just an individual and or a sole proprietor, so you only have one thing for your uh, business uh, and your individual. So in this case, the crucial yeah. thing is: mag incorporate ba siya, or will right. she run the business as a proprietor? Meaning, walang corporation. She has to use the same thing. No? Yes. Right. So let me okay. let me continue my answer to the, the series questions. Firstly, she's got to register with the BIR as a mm -hmm. businesswoman, and uh, we use form. She has form. Uh, 1905, that's 1905. the registration. 1905, okay. All right. Let's take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these reminders. See you. We're still watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. And we are still joined by our guests, uh, Commissioner Nelson Aspe of the BIR and Attorney Uni Mata Perez. Yeah, so many topics, so many questions, and so little time, right? Yes. All right. Okay, so so we have uh, a couple we, of. Uh, yeah, yeah we still have some so, questions right, from right. our viewers. And we have Georgie who asks us I work as a contractual employee, but the office accounting department is in charge of doing the filing of our taxes. Do I still need to sign or fill up a BIR form? And if so, what forms are these? It's a contractual employee. Well, she is similarly situated as a number, as, as a so number of BIR employees are uh, an employee. Okay. The so employer prepares the yeah, income tax uh, return. It's is true, Form 2316. Mm -hmm. And uh, the employee is also required to sign mm -hmm. uh, indicating his or her approval of the figures uh, reflected mm -hmm. in the return in the form and that uh, the employer is the one filing them along with those of the mm -hmm. other employees so we basically, call that the substituted filing of okay so commissioner if you're an employee at least you can sit back and relax but the form will reach you and you just have to sign it make sure it's correct mm -hmm. but it's the employer who will submit file, it file that. unless of you, course you you, you uh, 
you kind of made a distinction. Uh, what type of contractual employee should be? Oh, uh, I think we're talking because there's no such thing as substituted filing. So if yeah. you're a, an employee purely earning earning pure compensation income, only one employer mm -hmm. for the year, and the correct taxes were withheld, you don't have to file individually a separate return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, the Depcom Commissioner uh, asked to mention, like substituted filing. But if, for instance, you shift employers during the year, you have two employers, even mm -hmm. if they correct they withheld the correct taxes, you still are required to file a separate return yourself. Mm. Mm. So Because okay. not, not all the time, because in, in that situation, you might not end up paying uh, the correct taxes the, during the period, right? During the time that it was being withheld. Yes, right? well, number one, yeah. And, and because our tax, the tax rates are graduated. Mm -hmm. The higher the income, the higher the tax. So if you divide the income into two, you might have a lower tax rather than combine the two incomes so that's one in which case you have to f still pay the balance at yes the end, at the end yes year, right? oh, by the way we have to add there is a payment by installment oh okay, oh, okay. well that's so, very helpful oh, so yeah. if you if the For tax due is at least two thousand you can pay uh, the second on july 15. yes mm -hmm. all right so oh, great so is that interest free <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, until July 15. Okay, okay. okay good. Right. For individuals only. Uh, for okay. Only for individuals. Good. All right. Well, Ernie Santos, we have another question. Ernie Santos asked us, I'm a senior citizen. How do I exempt myself from filing income taxes since I only earn my income from house rentals? Okay. Yeah. It's Enjoy. It's a little Parang difficult because... Parang bad news eh. Kasi oh, sa PDF, yung commissioner... Ako. You paused there for a while. So, so parang business yan eh. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's business. So Rental it's, income it's, is business. So he has to declare full value. Yes. No exemption. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, commissioner, I also have a question. Yung marami ngayon, they sell on eBay, mm -hmm. online. So if mm -hmm. they earn money from selling something online, they have to declare that. With the BIR? Well, in the same manner as those doing them manually. Mm -hmm. They are supposed mm -hmm. to register with the BIR, issue receipts and invoices, do accounting, mm -hmm. file uh, VAT returns, yeah. or percentage tax returns as okay. the came. And regardless, yeah. even if you're below 18? Yes. As long as yes, you're yes. Now, since okay. we're in the topic, we were talking about uh, the tax is normally based where the person is, or the, the situs of the tax. Of, of income is where the income was generated. Is that correct? Word. Well, yeah. Where the, income Word the service is rendered. Where the serv service is rendered. I have a question. If, if let's say you were here, and we all know it's a globalized world, right? It's, it's, it's basically through computers you can, you can transact. And what if I'm able to close a deal and the prestige or the, the subject of the, the transaction is not here, not in the Philippines, physically not in the Philippines, but somewhere else? Is that considered still income generated in, within the Philippines and therefore taxable? Or are, are, is there room for a tax lawyer to be able to argue that? Um, uh, because the other factor that affects taxation or gives the state the power to tax is your citizenship there and you your residence. Okay. If you're a resident citizen, you're taxed on worldwide income, meaning mm -hmm. whether income earned here in the Philippines or abroad. All right. Of course, for aliens, we only tax them for income derived in the, in the Philippines. So if it's you, Rod, earning income from abroad, you have to declare it here. Of course, we have some tax credit mechanisms, meaning mm -hmm. if you're taxed abroad, mm -hmm. like Pacquiao, he right. was taxed okay. abroad, he can use that tax as a deduction to his tax due here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. there is that mechanism. Now, if, they have, if they're taxed higher there, do they get some credit here now? Well, practically no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is paid there. Whatever yeah. is paid there. Yes, all right. Okay, Rod, we have okay. more questions. Our next question is from Rome, and he asks us, what are the exemptions when paying taxes? What is the connection of having dependents with filing of taxes? I think this That's is related to... I mentioned it already. Yeah, There's the 25,000 uh, additional exemption for mm. each dependent. Yes, mm. meaning Not exceeding if four. you have kids, right? right. So this is uh, one of those instances that it pays to have a lot of kids, up to four at least. Yes. Up uh -huh. to four is the cap, right? If you have mm. four kids, you can deduct a hundred thousand pesos, but five mm. kids no more. You don't no? give incentives Just, uh, to the fifth. Four hundred thousand, no? I mean a hundred thousand, but a four kids lang, mm -mm. right? Now going back to uh, just a quick one. Uh, if you are, however, a Filipino OF, OFW, for example, and you're you're residing in uh, residing abroad, if they're taxed abroad, they don't have to pay taxes here anymore. As long as they don't have any Philippine income anymore. Yeah. No, no more Philippine income, and they're residing. Yes. Technically residing yes. there. Yes. Right. That, that's a benefit that was uh, granted when the tax code was amended. We call mm -hmm. them the non-resident citizens, those who are immigrants or are permanently working abroad. Okay. Next, we have a question from a phone viewer, Raven. 
and he asks us, are rebates from my business transactions with my suppliers subject to income tax and VAT? And I also would like to know what type of business will benefit most for optional tax deductions. Mm -hmm. wow. The first question, um, rebates. W well, definitely it will affect the taxation income, uh -huh. both uh, value-added tax and because mm -hmm. does come uh, the rebates are like discounts. Right. So it, 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 so it, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. They are yeah. like discounts. They are not really income, but uh, uh, the bottom figure would uh, really change. Uh, change because that uh, rebates are sort of uh, reductions in the cost of right. merchandise, so which, which will increase your, your taxable mm -hmm. income. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you'd like to answer the, the second question. Yeah. Sir? Well, optional the optional standard deductions now are available for both individuals. Uh, those who are in business or self-employed and corporations. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, it's 40%. So mm -hmm. if your actual deduction is less than 40, it's you better to avail of the OSD. It. Or if you don't want to keep so many records or just mm -hmm. uh, declare 40%. Yeah. So that's granted under the, that's the option of the taxpayer. In which mm -hmm. case you don't have to go through itemized yeah. Uh, you know, receipts Not anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. in lieu of the itemized deductions. Yeah. To but clarify to our viewers, op mm. optional standard deduction means mm. it's just a fixed percent, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have to submit to the BIR itemized deductions. You just apply 40% fixed and you deduct it and then that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. let us go back again to the quarterly filing okay. <laughs> in relation to the optional method of deduction. The well, uh, the option has got to be exercised at the beginning of mm. the year, ah. not at the so end of the year. So if you decide, if you change your mind, no, no, more. no more. For that taxable year. It's a very, a very interesting year. information. All right, Chona is asking us, my father is nearing his 70s and is currently residing in California with my sister and her family. He receives a monthly pension from the GSIS, which he asks us to deposit for him to his bank. Is he exempt from income tax and therefore not required to file for income tax return? So G GSIS pension. Yeah, that's correct. It is exempt? Uh, yes. It is, so yes. it is expressly and excluded. We call it exclusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about SSS premiums for those who retire and then they get that SSS? We call that the benefits. Yeah. Yes, those are, okay. they are also, also exempt. Yes. Um, okay. Good news, yeah, good news, at least for senior citizens. And now here, bad news the man. Uh, <laughs> question. <laughs> what, are, what are the penalties? Yeah. What are the penalties for, for not filing income tax? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. if there is uh, something to be paid, uh, definitely we will... Uh, we will uh, uh, well, uh, try to collect, uh, including a uh, surcharge of either 25% or 50%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have any money in the banks, for instance, what can the BIR do to them to collect the taxes? Well, there are other uh, remedies, say, um, going after their um, real property, personal property, etc. And uh, if civil remedies are not available, we have criminal, the extreme criminal. ones, the criminal the, 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 ones. Are there people who really go to jail yeah. uh, for tax evasion? Yes, there are. <coughs> yes, there are. All right. Okay, so that's enough. All right, I'm filing. <laughs> yeah. I'm filing. You know, in the U.S., even the <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, actors, oh, yeah. they get prosecuted for Absolutely. tax evasion. So Absolutely. it's scary. So, it, so, so the, the bottom line is, as a general rule, folks, if you're earning income, you definitely have yeah. to file income tax. Of course, uh, you have to check whether you fall under the exemptions. And of course, uh, if you are, you're unsure, you can always go to your nearest RDO or regional right, uh, BAR district office, uh, district office and, and, and find out. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Uh, we were telling you earlier, <laughs> it's, it's really, it, the time really well, goes quickly, you know? Uh, so, yes, uh, Yeah, you said we started this for how many semesters and we just have 30 minutes. I know, minutes 30 today. minutes. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll have a part two. So we'd like to thank our, our guests for this evening, uh, Deputy Commissioner Nelson Aspe and of course, Attorney Yuni Mata Perez for enlightening us on the topic. I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. And I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. Join us again ne next Monday as we talk about your legal rights on the issue of consumer rights on restaurants and other food establishments here on Legal Help Desk. Good night. So mga food poisoning, yeah, yeah. bad <laughs> service. That's right, yeah. All right. <laughs>
for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will be discussing your legal rights on the issue of taxes, what you need to know about how to file your income taxes correctly and on time, and what you need to do to avoid filing them late. We'll be discussing with two guests who are legal experts on the subject. Our guests tonight are Mr. Nelson Aspe, Deputy Commissioner of the Operations Group under the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and Attorney Yuni Mata Perez, who is the President of the Tax Management Association of the Philippines. Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. Filing yeah. our income tax return, let's concentrate on yeah. what should be on those income tax returns. So yes. maybe we can ask our Commissioner, yeah, guests from the BIR, yeah. What are really mga considered income? Because some people, they don't really have to worry if they're working for a company because of the withholding taxes. Pero may iba, it gets confusing pag uh, you have income coming from, for instance, may namana kang bahay na pinaparent mo. Mm -hmm. Or you share, yes. you sell shares of stock or property. Yes. Are, are those included in the filing of your income tax? Maybe you can clarify, uh, Depcom, and we'll go with uh, Tony Mata in a while. Well, ordinarily. Um... In the third quarter of 2011, a grand total of 231 million pesos was collected from taxpayers. However, some people get confused with the whole process of filing for their taxes, while some don't know the exact computation and deduction of taxes from their income. How does one file for their income tax and what are its requirements? How is the computation of taxes done? Who should file for your income tax returns? Good evening, you are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law. Today marks the start of tax season, meaning people are obligated to file for their income taxes at the Bureau of Internal Revenue offices. Hi, Rod. Attorney. Good, Good evening, evening classmates. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have Yuni and I. We were classmates, so, uh, so uh, it was great to see each other. And this is a favorite topic of mine, yes. personally. Actually, yeah. today, just yeah. just this evening, I was reminded of a very famous quote by yeah. someone from Twitter. Now, yeah. that only in life, only two things are certain: death and taxes. Yes, exactly. So we have someone from the BIR <laughs> so who makes sure that we, have, we have taxes. We have two people here who are certain yeah. about what they're doing. So yes. maybe we should start off. Uh, we'll we'll set first the parameters, na, um, attorneys. Because uh, I think. The, 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 the topic of taxes is really, uh, yes. really wide. Really, but since April 15 uh, yeah, is about 